Hello, Alex from Barefaced here with more sound for musicians and here is something that might be a little hard to understand. You might have to watch it a few times to get your head around it. But sound waves have this ability to interfere with each other and superpose upon each other. So what that means is, say we have this lower frequency wave, so we're exhibiting them as transverse waves because that is the easiest way to show a sound wave. It's what you'll be used to seeing it if, as I first saw on sound forging Cubase back in the day, but whatever program using Logic's what we use here now. Um, so got a low frequency wave and then we've got a high frequency lower amplitude wave. If those two waves meet they will combine to make a more complex wave like this and you can literally see the two waves so beautifully drawn by me superposed on each other. The fascinating thing is if that is an oversimplified version of the sound of a kick drum, and this is an oversimplified version of the sound of, say, a hi-hat. Your brain, you could hear a kick drum, you could hear a hi-hat. When you hear this sound wave here, which is made of the two, and is a complicated wave that looks different to both of those, your brain can still dismantle those two sounds back into this, which is really clever. It's quite a, a remarkable thing. So that's superposition, and obviously that can happen to very complex degrees because the sound of a musical instrument is made of many waves superposed on each other, and then the sound of a band playing together is many different waves from these many instruments, some of which are multiple sound sources, like say the drum kit, and also those waves that are then reflecting around the room and diffracting around the room. There might be a bit of refraction, probably not a lot, but certainly diffracting and reflecting a lot around the room. And then so by the time they come to us, there are so many waves that have added together to make an incredibly complicated wave that's hitting each of our ears. Now, the other example of this is kind of the reverse of it, and that's interference. So that is where you have two waves. Shall I zoom in a bit more? There we go. Two waves which are of equal amplitude, equal frequency, but they are 180 degrees out of phase. So this and this are reversed, so reverse directions. Add these two together and we get total cancellation. So that is interference. Now what you will realise is the truth of what happens with sound is we constantly get interference and superposition when waves meet and that's just that's just what we hear in a given space but this cancellation thing is the joy of noise cancelling headphones which are not perfect but they are they're pretty cool there are examples you will hear of interference and superposition when you are tuning an instrument let's see if this um this is uh a very cheap, this was a, da, 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 not a bin find, we have a bin guitar which is one of our acoustics and this is the uh, five pound um, car boot sale guitar. But if you tune using your fifth and seventh fret harmonics, you can hear the beats of the sounds interfering with each other. I wonder if that will come through on the microphone. But yeah, when you tune with harmonics, so you're getting the same note of two strings, the beats are the interference pattern of those two notes, which is quite a cool thing. Another thing you will notice, if you get a very pure sound, I've been getting quite a lot of these ideas from a fantastic old textbook, um, written by such a good series of books that the chap who wrote the book in this series on uh, relativity was a little-known man called Albert Einstein. But yes, old book which has been a great source of knowledge for me and I'm kind of using it as a way to guide this route what's bringing in ideas from other things because, you know, physics is physics and music is music. And it talks about tuning forks a lot in it for, to illustrate things because they didn't have the technology we have now. But if you set a tuning fork going and you cover one ear, and then you move around the room, you will hear yourself moving in and out of null points of the wave from that tuning fork, especially where the reflections from that tuning fork are then meeting the tuning fork 
and counselling. You will not hear this null point thing due to interference very often with full range music or with complex sound sources because there are so many frequencies but also because we have two ears and although one ear may be in a null point because sound is a wave and waves have given wavelengths, the other ear, other ear will not be at a null point unless the wavelength is a multiple of the distance between our ears. So there we go. Interference and superposition. An interesting thing about sound waves, it can be proved that any wave, however complex, can be actually made up of sine waves of different frequencies, different amplitudes and different phase. You can make any wave, any repeating wave pattern, out of lots of sine waves, which again is sort of the, the beauty of music and physics coming together. So there we go, interference superposition. I'll be back. Thank you. Keep learning.